good morning all hope you are all doing good so today we'll be discussing about localization techniques so dental radiograph is a two dimensional view of a three dimensional object that is present in the jaws so many times diagnosis become difficult for a clinician because it only depicts an object in the supra inferior and antero posterior positions it does not Uh, give us an insight about the buccolingual relationship or the depth of an object, and for this, to overcome this, uh, there are certain techniques which is called as the localization technique by which uh, we can actually get three-dimensional information from this two-dimensional picture that is the dental radiograph. So this is an image showing how. Uh, different objects uh, placed at different planes in a three dimensional object get superimposed when we take a radiograph everything will be superimposed over one another and we are not able to clearly identify where each object is located depth wise so in order to overcome this we use the localization technique so uh, the indications for localization include foreign bodies impacted teeth within the jaw unerupted teeth retained roots salivary stones in the gland jaw fractures if they are to localize uh, broken needles and instruments to localize the root positions the canal uh, locations and filling materials uh, within the jaw we use localization techniques so let's see which are the main localization methods so there are uh, many techniques of localization which includes miller's techniques it is also called as right angle technique then there is clark's technique or the tube ship technique buckel object rule then there is stereoscopic views and nowadays recent uh, techniques like ct and cone beam ct uh, these uh, give us an idea about a three dimensional uh, view of the object that we are looking for so let's see each technique in detail first the right angle technique it employs two projections of the same object taken at right angle to one another that is usually in this technique we initially take a standard radio uh, intraoral iopa radiograph to identify the object and when we have identified the object we go for another radiograph which is at 90 degree to this standard intraoral radiograph Mm, which uh, is an occlusal radiograph in certain cases so this is an example where in the initial picture we can see a radiograph with an impacted canine we can actually locate the supra inferior and the exact uh, antero posterior location of the impacted tooth but we are not able to say if it is lingually or buccally placed so for that we need to go for another radiograph at right angle to this uh, iopa radiograph which is an occlusal radiograph or an occlusal projection and in the second um, image with, of an occlusal mandibular um, true occlusal radiograph we can see the exact location of the impacted tooth buccolingually and it is uh, placed as you can see in the lingual position but the disadvantage of this technique is uh, this cannot be employed in case of maxilla because in maxilla there will be superimpositions of a uh, lot of structures which will uh, be difficult for us to actually identify the exact location of the impacted uh, tooth or the foreign body so this is another example where uh, in the first image there is we can see a foreign body might be an broken instrument uh it's uh, in seen as within the jaw in the first uh, radiograph when we go for a second radiograph which is an occlusal projection of the same region we can see that actually the object is located outside of the jaw might be in the soft tissue in the second image uh, we can see first there is a lateral projection where there is a fracture line which is seen in the uh, mandibular body so in order to localize it further from where to where the fracture line is running we need to take another radiograph at right angle to that which is a occlusal projection it is actually uh, the projection is happening uh, in 
90 degrees to the projection of the lateral skull. And in the second radiograph, we can actually see from where to where the fracture line is running and how it is displaced and everything is clearly visible. So this is how uh, right angle technique is employed for localizing an object. The second uh, method, which is the Clark's rule and the buckle object rule or the tube shift technique, it employs the principle of parallax. So principle of parallax was first introduced by Clark in 1909, and it is defined as the apparent displacement of an object because of different position of the observer. That is, if there are two objects that are placed at, in two separate planes, and when an observer is viewing it from two different position, the object will appear to move in different directions in relation to one another from where the uh, observer is standing to the next position. So here is a picture that is uh, showing two objects uh, placed in different planes. In the center image, we can see when the observer is uh, viewing it in from the front, we see that the two objects are superimposed on one another. And now when we move to the left side, we can see that the object in front, or which is uh, closer to the observer, is moving in the opposite direction. And the object at the back is moving in the same direction as that of the observer. And to the image on the right, if we see when the observer is moving to the right, the two objects at different planes are also separated and moving in two different directions. So this is principle of parallax. This also shows the uh, same uh, thing. We can see that when we are moving in to the left side, we can see that the object nearer is moving in the opposite direction and the object farther away is moving in the opposite direction. And similarly, when we go to the opposite direction, the two objects are moving in different planes. So this is the principle of parallax. So parallax can happen in horizontal plane as well as vertical plane. So in order to obtain parallax in horizontal plane, we have to move the X-ray tube head from uh, uh, changing the horizontal angulation. That is, we can take an radiograph, an IOPA radiograph, uh, centering the central incisor, then we can take another one centering the canine region. Like that, uh, if the tube head is moved in a horizontal direction, we'll get a parallax in horizontal plane. Similarly, when we move the tube head in a vertical direction, we get parallax in vertical plane. That is, for example, when we are taking a panoramic radiograph, the tube head is directed or the PID is directed upwards. And the uh, when we are taking a uh, maxillary occlusal radiograph, the tube head is directed downwards or the PID is directed downwards. So this gives a parallax in the vertical plane. So parallax in the vertical plane can be obtained by taking or a combination of a periapical uh, radiograph and an upper standard occlusal it can also be obtained by combining a maxillary anterior occlusal and a panoramic radiograph. So the first technique, uh, which is called the tube shift localization or the Clark's technique or the slope rule, slope uh, depicts same lingual opposite buckle. This employs the principle of parallax. So in the slope rule, it is used to identify the buckle or the lingual location of an object in relation to a reference object. So if the image of the object moves mesially, when the tube head is moved mesially, that is in the same direction, as per slope, the object is located on the lingual aspect. And if the object or the image of the object moves distally, when the tube head is moved mesially, that is in the opposite direction, the object is located on the buccal aspect. So for slope rule to work, there must be a change in either horizontal or vertical angulation of the X-ray beam as the tube head is moved. So in this picture, you can see uh, there are two projections made with a shift in the horizontal angulation. So there is actually change in direction of the beam that is falling on the object and the radiograph. So when that happens, we get two images uh, with uh, by comparing the two images we and using the slope rule, same lingual opposite buckle rule, we can identify uh, 
the exact location of the foreign body or the impacted tooth. So this can again happen in when in horizontal plane and in vertical plane. So there is horizontal tube shift. That is when that can be obtained by moving the tube head from incisor to the canine region, from canine to premolar, premolar to molar region. We are giving a, a horizontal tube shift and uh, the, we'll get a pa parallax in horizontal plane. So here we can see in the image, there is a buccal object, which is yellow in color, and there is a lingual object, which is red in color. So when we are giving, uh, taking a radiograph uh, with the correct angulation, we'll get an image or a radiograph with both the objects superimposed over one another. Now, when we uh, shift the tube head mesially, we can see that uh, in the resultant image, the buccal object has moved in the opposite direction and the lingual object has moved in the same direction as that of the tube head. That is when we shift the tube head distally, the lingual object has moved distally and the mesial object or the buccal object has moved mesially. So with uh, the uh, same lingual opposite buccal uh, or the slow row, we can identify uh, where each of these objects is exactly located. Now, similarly, when we move the tube head mesially, the beam is directed distally. Now we can see that the object that is, uh, the buccal object is moving in the opposite direction and the lingual object is moving in the same direction as that of the tube head. So again, we can identify the exact location of the object. So here, uh, this is used to identify the buccal and the lingual canals in case of a premolar. So first we take a IOPA radiograph uh, where we'll get the two canals superimposed over one another. Now we take another radiograph by shifting the tube head uh, into one direction and we have to compare the two radiographs, the canal which seem to be moved in the same direction as that of the tube head will be the lingual canal and that moved in the opposite direction will be the buccal canal. Okay, now let's see how the vertical tube shift works. So this is the same as that in the horizontal tube shift, but the shift happens in vertical direction like maxillary periapical radiograph, then a bite wing, then a mandibular periapical radiograph, the shift happens in the vertical plane and we can take these radiographs to compare the uh, slow growth. So here we can see again, there is a buccal object and a lingual object. We have projected it with a, a ideal um, angulation. Then we'll get an image or a radiograph wherein both the objects are superimposed over one another. Now, in order to separate them, we change the vertical angulation and the tube head is moved upwards. Now the beam is directed downwards. Now we can see that the buccal object has moved in the opposite direction that is uh, downwards and the lingual object has moved in the same direction that is upwards as that of the tube head. Uh, this will help us to identify the buccal and the lingual object. Same way if we shift the tube head downwards, there will be a relative movement of the buccal and lingual objects and this will help us to identify the exact location of the objects. So that was Clark's rule. Then the next is the buccal object rule, which is very similar to the Clark's rule. So it was suggested by Richards in 1952 and it states that when we take two radiographs, uh, that is when two radiographs are made of a pair of objects, the image of the most buccal object move as relative to the lingual in the same direction of that of the X-ray beam. That is the object moving in the same direction as that of the X-ray beam is the buccal object. So we need to change the horizontal angulation in order to locate vertically aligned structures like the root canals. And we need to change the vertical angulation in order to locate horizontally aligned structures like the mandibular canal. The next technique is stereoscopy. This is used to determine the location of small intracranial calcifications, multiple foreign bodies, etc. It requires exposure of two films, one for each eye, but it delivers double amount of radiation doses to the patient. So this is a drawback. 
and between the exposure, the film is shifted from right eye to the left eye. That is, we are taking two radiographs for each eye, one for the how we see uh, when we uh, view with the right eye and one how we see when we view from the left eye. And after processing the film, it is um, viewed with the help of a stereoscope, which uses mirrors and prisms to coordinate the accommodation and convergence of the viewer's eye. And this fuses the two images conveniently and it gives a conclusion. So this is a stereoscope. We take two radiographs, one for each eye, for the right and the left eye, process it, and then we uh, mount it in this uh, stereoscope. And uh, inside, with the help of prisms and mirrors, this will give us converge the uh, image and gives us a conclusive image where we can uh, actually identify the position of the foreign object. Now, uh, there is localization using CT and cone beam CT. This is the most direct method and it is uh, does not have any principles or any principle of parallax. It does not have any superimpositions or any uh, magnification. So this gives us a direct idea of where it is actually located. So this helps in localization of unerupted developmental anomalies. Uh, so we can visualize these uh, abnormalities uh, in different planes directly. There is no need to use any principles. So this is an image showing the first one showing an impacted canine uh, where we can uh, assume that it is uh, placed in between the in uh, the lateral incisor and the premolar, but the exact buccolingual position is not known. So with the help of a CBCT machine, when we take the image and when we uh, take different slices of the image, we can actually identify where it is buccolingually placed. This is another um, image showing an impacted tooth. We can actually see that it is placed horizontally uh, in relation to the central incisors. Now, when we take different axial sections, uh, after taking a CTCT image, this is axial sections, we can actually see that the tooth is located uh, buccolingually, very near to the incisive foramen. This is uh, the image, the sagittal cross-sectional images of the same tooth. Here also, we can actually see how uh, closely it is related to the adjacent root uh, of the tooth, that is the central incisor. So with the help of a CBCT image, we can take multiplanar sections, which uh, directly gives us an idea of where the tooth is actually located, the measurements of the crown and root of the tooth. If uh, we'll be able to see if it is uh, buccally or lingually placed, where the crown is located, where the uh, root is located, how it is related to the adjacent vital structures, how it is related to the uh, adjacent tooth the tooth root, et cetera. So this gives us a very direct uh, view of how an impacted or a foreign body is located within the jaw. So uh, that was uh, different localization techniques. So object localization is uh, one of the techniques that involves in locating any hidden object, be it impacted teeth, foreign objects, anything. So the right knowledge regarding which technique to be used is required by every clinician for a day-to-day -day practice. But since uh, recently, CBCT has been employed uh, very much and it gives us an accurate idea of where it is located. So most of the other techniques are not uh, that much uh, used these days. But it will be very helpful uh, for us to know that because in case of the direct uh, advanced imaging modality is not available, we could employ the other techniques and uh, accurately locate the impacted uh, tooth or the unerupted tooth or any foreign objects inside the jaw or in the head and neck region. So that was uh, about localization. Thank you.